Ezekiel chapter 39. Therefore thou, son of man, prophesy against Gog. We talked about him last chapter 38. And say. Yeah, it's interesting. Eh, maybe because I'm doing a thing on Christmas. The birth of Jesus is mentioned once. And here we've had two chapters about Gog. A man and his army is going to be destroyed. I really don't think God wants us to look and celebrate the birthday of Jesus. Really don't think. I think it's a sin. Now, we have a free will. You can believe what you are. I'll put the facts out there. But here's two chapters on God. Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tabu. Meshach and Tabu are cities, towns. I will turn thee back. We, we read that last time. I'm going to send them backwards. You know, I remember one time when I was, when I was delivering papers for the newspaper and I'm going down a snowy road. I'm about to go up this hill. I thought I was going to make it. I'm going for it. They say, I know I'm going backwards. <laughs> and when you go backwards, you're not going where you want to go. And leave but a six part of D. Six is the number of man. I will cause thee to come up from the north parts. Come from the north. I will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. He's coming into the land of Israel. I will smite thy bow with thy left hand. I will smite the bow out of thy left hand. I will cause arrows to fall out of thy right hand. So he's right-handed. Because he's got to pull that bow and the strength is in the right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel. Death, defeat, loss. Thou and all thy bands, all the men that are with you, and the people that are with thee. I will, and you know, bands is the military people. Where they could be the chefs, the tender of the animals. You know, the the, the shoemaker. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort. I'm going to feed the animals with the dead and the slain of men in the military and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. That's speaking about with Armageddon. This great mass of a military killed and the vultures are going to be hungry, hungry no more. Thou shalt fall upon the open field For I have spoken and saved the Lord, and God spoke it. It's going to happen. Out in the open, out in the field. I will send a fire upon Magog. And among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. Those isles, it's, I don't know. And they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. So it's a sign to Israel of Jehovah and the power and the protection and the provision for his people. I will not let them pollute my name, my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. When Jesus Christ comes back, we pick up Israel, we bring him into the land. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the King of the Jews, King of Kings, King of Lord of Lords. When he sets up a Jewish government, look at the Jewish government. 
Jesus came on his own. David, Jewish prince. The 12 apostles, which most of them were Jewish. One was a Canaanite. Paul was Jewish. And then you got the church age made of Gentiles and Jews who earned the right for the inheritance. And then you got the temple and the Levite servant. It's going to be all Jewish. I hate to be a KKK. They hate the Jews. I hate to be the Roman Catholic Church because there's no other but the church. Behold, it is come. It is done. Save the Lord God. This is the day where I've spoken. What God said will come to pass. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons. Both shield and buckler. Metal. The bows and the arrow. And the hand stays like a long pole with a hook. And spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. That's a whole mess of weapons. Let me tell you, American, I have the right to a gun, and they're going to confiscate my guns. They're going to take my guns. You won't take my guns unless you take it from my bloody fingers. God took their guns. God took their weapons. And God burned them. It ain't the Democrats that are stealing your guns. It's you lost your rights by serving God and he's starting to take your freedom and your rights away. Forget, oh, you know, Adolf Hitler stole the gun. No, God allowed the devil to work in Adolf Hitler to be the leader of the world by God. It ain't the, the, the COVID-19 ain't China, it's God. And God has allowed President Biden to say, take the vaccine or you are in penalty of the law if you, Christian, violate what the president said as not a, it goes against the scriptures, you are at fault. And they'll say, and we're losing our freedom, we're losing our freedom. When my journey to America has never used their freedom for God and the Bible. You know, they go over there, you know, the Israelis had to go to the Palestinians to get, you know, to sharpen their tools and all that because they stole all their weapons. Here's God taking their weapon. You will have to check your weapons in at death because you can't take your guns when you die. And I believe it. You want a gun? Get one. You don't want a gun? Don't get one. But don't go crying. Because I'll tell you right now, if you shoot and kill a lost man, you have put a lost man into hell. And I guarantee you told him about Jesus before you shot him. That didn't cost you anything. But you probably turned me off. So that they shall take no wood out of the field. They're not going to need firewood. Neither cut down any out of the forest. For they shall burn the weapons with fire. Amen. Get the NRA all upset. Get your Southerners, who may be Christians, may not be Christians, all upset. Burn the weapons, but you won't burn the God. You won't burn the Bible. You won't burn the service. They shall spoil those that spoil them. You get what you deserve. The golden rule, do unto others as others do unto you. And rob those that rob them, saith the Lord God. 
That's Galatians 6 and be not deceived whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap. God's not deceived, man is deceived. What comes around goes around. And tons of other. And it shall come to pass that I will give unto God a place. A place there of the graves of Israel. So God's going to die. In the valley of passengers on the east of the sea. Dead Sea. How appropriate. And it shall stop the nose of the passion. There's going to be such dead bodies. And stinking birds. And carnivorous beasts. This gross test. It's going to stink the rotting corpse. There shall they bury Gog and all his multitude. That did not happen in Maccabee. This is yet future. And they shall call it the Valley of Haman Gog. Seven months. You're going to burn the wood for seven years. Seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them. That they might cleanse the land. Now remember what the law said, the red heifer? That if any Israelite in war go out and touch a dead body, they have to be purified by the water and the, and the I think it was hyssop. Of the red heifer. That's the law. The law is coming back. So. Be on the lookout for. Well maybe we'll be gone in the glory. So we don't need to look out for it. But. When the red heifer starts showing up. And they take the red heifer down to the valley. And they slay the red heifer. Because they're going to need a lot of red heifer to purify the Jews who are touching dead bodies. I mean, the law is coming back. You can't say the Jews are going to do this in the law, the Jews are going to do that. In the law. Oh, okay, erase the red heifer part. We won't. No, you can't do that. You gotta cleanse the land. Why? It's it's putrefying, stinky, dead men. Not only does the land gotta be clean, but the air has to be aired out. You know, there's some people that they die in their house, and the windows and everything's closed. And the only way they find out that there was a dead body is it starts reeking. And the neighbor's like, what is that smell? That's a road That's one body. <laughs> That's your next door neighbor who is rotting in his chair or in his bed. And you smell it next door. One body. <laughs> Multiply that by tens, by hundreds, by thousands, by tens of thousands, by hundreds of thousands, and maybe millions. You know, those you're not going to take the trees down, but you're going to need some of those little green trees hanging from your camel because it's going to stink. Yay. That's what the devil said. Yay. All the people in the land shall bury them. It's going to be a nationalized thing to bury these dead bodies. And it shall be to them a renowned day. That I shall be glorified, save the Lord. It's gonna be hey, it's gonna be glory to God. The enemies are gone. And they shall also sever out men of continual appointment, grave diggers, passing through the land to bury with the passengers, those that remain on the face of the earth. So they're gonna go bury the bodies. There's gonna be more bodies, and there's gonna be pieces of bodies. To cleanse it. 
After the end of seven months, they shall serve. So they're burying the body for seven months, and they're going to go out more. Oh, wait a minute. There's a finger. I bury it. Well, my shoes is there's an ear. Bury it. There's someone's foot. Bury it. Oh, we missed that body. Bury it. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any sees a man's bone, <laughs> then shall he set up a sign by it, until the barriers have buried in the valley of Hamangar. Now you just got to wonder. <laughs> History repeats itself. This is yet future. Imagine the Jews coming along. Oh. There's the tibia. Give me a sign. And the sign is a cross. Like the military does. They take a whole bunch of bodies. They bury them in a hole. They bury the hole up. And they put a bunch of crosses. And those crosses are not even where the bodies are. But they put a bunch of crosses. That's all over the world. And it may be a different cross. Maybe a different shaped cross. Maybe a different style cross. But they put a cross. Normandy has cross, cross, yeah, crosses. You imagine a Jew later on taking a cross and uh, I'll cherish the old rugged cross. And, curses he that hangs upon a on a tree. If that's the case, if it's a cross, unlike Arlington National Cemetery has got a bunch of tombstones, over here, if this is the case, you're going to have a whole bunch of crosses. What do you think about that? And you're going to have many, 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 I'm not a broken record, many, many tombs of unknown soldiers, especially if it's just a finger or a bone. Because lost men go into hell with no name at all. We're a Christian nation. Why isn't Arlington... Cemetery with crosses. Crosses are used overseas. Well, we might offend somebody. And Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Stiley says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Set a sign by it. Jews require a sign. Till the barriers have buried in the valley of Hamagod. And also the name of the city shall Hamar. This shall they cleanse the land. 